As the corporate media wrings its hands continuously as it counts down the timer to apocalypse with the debt ceiling looming large, it's important to understand so much of what's going on right now is really much ado about nothing. It's about relitigating existing spending that's already been approved by Congress, signed into law by the president, and now expected to be acted upon. Contracts have been signed. People's social security payments are on the line. We're talking about keeping government open. We're talking about keeping pension plans going, et cetera. So why is the hubbub about the debt ceiling coming up every single year? Well, it goes back to a act of Congress 1917 called the Liberty Bond Act of 1917. And this was expected to facilitate and help the president to actually make spending happen more efficiently and quickly. Because at that point in time, every single bond that had to be sold had to be debated. In fairness, we know that bonds really don't have to be sold because bonds do not actually finance the government. This is a statutory uh, law that says, hey, when you go to deficit spend, when you use the Federal Reserve to deficit spend, you have got to sell a corresponding bond to make up the difference. This right here is an anachronism from the gold standard. It really, quite frankly, doesn't need to be there at all. But a president is, by law, expected to make sure all laws are executed exactly as written, to make sure that all bills are paid. And that comes from the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution that says that the U.S. debt shall not be questioned. In other words, debt that we take on as a government, as a country, that debt is really just contracts we've signed, agreements we've made. When we make an agreement to spend money, that money is now contractually obligated to go to the individual. If we don't pay those bills, it will bring about a depression, an absolute collapse of almost all facets of the U.S. economy, including the global economy, because many of the contracts we sign have far-reaching impacts from the military, which you may want to cut, uh, to regular spending that we've promised to developing nations. In the end, every aspect of our government is dependent upon us being able to be a creditor that can be considered trustworthy. And if we don't pay our bills, these bills right here will create a condition that will not only impact the U.S. as a lender of last resort as a um, financial uh, safe zone, but it will also crush the little people who depend on this for their social security checks. That's right. Social security checks are paid for by the treasury. And if we don't have the debt ceiling lifted, those payments would be heart, uh, hurt as well. In the end, the way past this is clearly to either A, invoke the 14th Amendment and say, we are going to pay our bills on time because the Constitution supersedes any law that was written before. The other factor here is, is that we could mint a trillion dollar coin if we want to get cheeky. Minting a trillion dollar coin is perfectly legitimate and legally possible as the Treasury would simply authorize the mint to go ahead and create this coin. It would then in turn deposit it at the Fed that would then deposit into the Treasury's general account, which would ensure that all payments are made going forward in perpetuity. The other option, which is not on the table right, uh, right now, is to literally eliminate the law that was written in 1917. So there you have it, my friends. The debt ceiling is much ado about nothing. It's relitigating uh, spending that was already approved by Congress and should not be a thing. It's right now being used as a weapon by both the GOP right now and quite honestly, the Democrats. But in the end, it really does come down to about 10 of the Trump uh, styled Congress creditors that are literally trying to exact a price, trying to peel back spending that has already been approved. And this, my friends, would be a disaster.